So very good day to everybody. This is uh, electromagnetic fields and waveguides, the practical session. And in today's class, we'll discuss about the finite length transmission lines. So this is especially for you, my dear students and young researchers, and you can reach me at drdrkristanan at the rate of gmail.com. So before beginning the session, once again, let me thank God for giving me this opportunity to deliver this useful session to share my knowledge among my fellow national, international participants, students and young researchers. So in this class, we'll have a short introduction towards uh, finite length transmission line. Then we'll discuss about incident wave and reflected wave. Okay. Then we'll discuss about the lossy transmission line. How you can eliminate the reflections in the transmission line. Okay. So then we'll discuss about one mile transmission, shorted transmission line, the line terminated in the characteristic impedance. Then we discuss about long as well as short transmission lines. So finally, we are going to end this class with a electrically long line. Okay. So at regular intervals, I'll be giving you some short videos to discuss the knowledge in our topics. Right. So transmission line. Maybe if you take it in the case of the infinite line. Okay. So it's actually if you take physically, it's impossible. Okay. So all transmission lines will be having you know some finite line, and it will do not behave precisely the same as what you can imagine with the case of infinite line. So here the characteristic impedance rating of the transmission line is very, very important. Even when you try to deal with the uh, transmission lines of limited length. Okay. So characteristic impedance earlier days, you call it as the surge impedance, the surge which occurs. Okay. So maybe if a transient voltage or maybe a surge is applied to the end of the transmission line, the line will actually draw a current proportional to the surge voltage magnitude divided by the lines surge impedance so i is given by e divided by z so e is the nothing but the voltage okay divided by z okay so that is the impedance so ohm's law relationship between current as well as voltage what is ohm's law v is equal to i r that is ohm's law so ohm's law relationship between the current and voltage will hold true for a limited period of time but not in the indefinite case okay so maybe if the end of the transmission line is open circuited which is left unconnected so the current wave propagating down the line's length will have to uh, stop at the end since the current cannot flow because there is no continuing path so that will you know stop suddenly abrupting the stoppage of current at the line's end which you know causes a pile up to occur along the length of the transmission line as the electric charges carriers successively will find no place to go okay so imagine let us take in the case a train traveling down the track with slack between the rail car openings between the rail car couplings so if the lead car suddenly crashes into the immobile barricade it will come to a stop that will cause the one behind it to come to a stop as soon as the first coupling slack is taken up which causes next rail car to stop as soon as the next coupling slack is taken up so that will again stop 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 again till the last you know uh, boat gets stopped okay so the train does not come to a halt together first one will stop then the next 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 and go on okay but rather in the sequence from the first car till the last car so first car stops and afterward this one this one then second then the last car will stop okay so a signal propagating from the source end of the transmission line to the load end you can call it as a incident wave okay so the propagation of the signal from the load end to the source end that's what you saw okay the current encountering the end of the open circuit transmission line you call it as a reflected wave okay so when this electric charge carrier is going to pile up propagating to the battery so the current at the battery will stop and this line will be acting as a simple open circuit so everything happens very quickly for the transmission line of reasonable length and that is the reason we go for ohm meter measurement of line which will be never you know showing the brief time period where the line actually behaves as a resistor okay so maybe for a mile long cable with a velocity factor of 0 
the signal propagation velocity would be 66 percentage of the speed of the light or maybe 122,760 miles per second. So it will be taking 1 by 122,760 of the second which means it is approximately 8 millisecond okay for a sorry not 8, 8, 8 microsecond for a, a signal to travel from between one end to another. Okay. So maybe for the current signal to reach the lines in and of course reflect back to the source the round trip time is twice the amount so which means 2 multiplied by 8 microsecond approximately 16 microsecond okay so we'll understand the significance of the incident and reflected waves so maybe high speed uh, measurement instruments are able to detect this transit time from source to the line in again back to the source and may be used for the purpose of determining the length of the cable. So this technique can be used for determining the presence and of course the location of the break in one or maybe both of the cables conductors since the current will reflect off the wire break just as it will go with the end of the open circuited cable. Okay. So instruments for this purpose you can call it as a time domain reflector meters. So the instruments used for this purpose you can call it as the time domain reflectometers called as TDR. So the basic principle is similar to that of the sonar, sound, navigation and ranging. Okay, same principle. So you generate a sound pulse and you measure the time it takes for the echo to actually return. Okay. So, so, so a similar phenomenon takes place if the end of the transmission line is short circuited which means that when the voltage wave front reaches the end of the line it is reflected back to the source because the voltage cannot exist between the two electrically common points. So when this reflected wave is going to reach the source the source sees the entire transmission line as a short circuit. So again this happens very quickly as the signal can propagate round trip down and up the transmission line at whatever velocity allowed by the dielectric material between the lines conductors. So similar exp uh, simple experiment will try to uh, illustrate the phenomenon of the wave reflection in the transmission lines. So take a long uh, you know length of the rope okay by one end and whip it with a rapid up and down motion like this you make it up okay. So wave can be seen traveling down the rope's length until it dissipates entirely due to friction. So here you see, you see in the diagram you are having a rope then immediately you do like this okay so a wave will be formed. So the wave is going to propagate 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 and afterwards it subsides okay for the lossy transmission line. So this is analogous to the long transmission line with the internal loss. So the signal steadily grows weaker as it propagates down the line's length that never reflects back to the source. So however, if the far end of the rope is secured to a solid object at a point prior to the incident wave uh, total dissipation, so again your second wave will be trying to reflect back to the hand so that you will be able to see. So we will have the reflected wave for example the, the rope is connected to one end stiff in the connected so you will see the wave propagating reflecting back to the source. So usually the purpose of the transmission line you are going to convey the electrical energy from one point to another. So maybe if the even if the signals are intended for information only and not to power some significant load device the ideal situation would be for all of the original signal energy to travel from the source to the load and then be completely absorbed or maybe dissipated by the load for maximum SNR signal to noise ratio. So the loss along the length of the transmission line is actually undesirable because they are reflected waves because reflected energy is not delivered to the end device. Okay. So reflections can be eliminated by the transmission line if the load's impedance is exactly equal to the characteristic impedance or maybe the surge impedance of the line. Okay. So this is the surge impedance. So for example, let us take in the case uh, 50 ohm coaxial cable A that is either open circuited or maybe short circuited will reflect all of the incident energy back to the source. So however, if the 50 ohm resistor is connected the, to the end of the cable, there will be no reflected energy 
So all of the signal energy being dissipated by the resistor. So that makes perfect sense if we have to return to our hypothetical infinite length transmission line. Okay, so a transmission line of 50 ohm characteristic impedance and maybe infinite length will behave like a 50 ohm resistance as measured from one end. Okay, so maybe if you cut this line to some finite length, it will behave like a 50 ohm resistor to a constant source of DC voltage for a brief time. Then it will behave like a open circuit or maybe short circuit depending on what condition we leave the cut end of the line. Okay, so either it is open or maybe short. Okay, so we'll have an infinite transmission line that looks like a resistor. So here we'll have switch, battery, we'll have 50 ohm coaxial cable infinite line. Okay, so the cable's behavior from the perspective of the battery would be exactly similar to the 50 ohm resistor. Then we'll have one mile transmission. So we'll have one mile 50 ohm coaxial cable velocity factor is equal to 0 0.66. Here it is open. Okay. So the cable's behavior from the perspective of the battery would be like the 50 ohm resistor for two times that eight microseconds. So 16 microsecond. Then it's a uh, open or maybe infinite resistance. The shorter transmission line as well. Okay. So 50 ohm coaxial cable. Okay. Velocity uh, factor equal to 0 0.66. It is shorted. Okay one mile transmission so the cables behavior from the perspective of the battery okay would be like the 50 ohm resistor for the 16.292 microsecond then it's a short arm b zero resistance then we'll have line terminated in the characteristic impedance okay so 50 ohm coaxial cable velocity factor 0 0.66 the line which is terminated in this characteristic impedance so the cable's behavior from the perspective of the battery would be exactly like the 50 ohm resistor. So a terminating resistor matching you know, the natural impedance of the transmission line makes the line appear infinitely long from the perspective of the source because the resistor has the ability to eternally dissipate energy in the same way a transmission line of infinite length is able to eternally absorb energy. So here reflected waves will also manifest if the terminating resistor is not precisely equal to the characteristic impedance of the transmission line not just if the line is left unconnected or maybe open or maybe shorter okay so though the energy reflection will not be total with the terminating impedance of a mismatch it will be partial half so this happens whether or not the terminating resistance is greater or maybe lesser than the characteristic impedance of the line so we'll have re-reflection of the reflected wave. So re-reflection of this reflected wave, okay, so can, that can occur at the source end of the transmission line if the source internal, internal impedance is not exactly equal to the line's characteristic impedance. So that is by the Thevenin's theorem, Thevenin's equivalent impedance. So a reflected wave returning back to the source will be dissipated entirely if the source impedance is going to match the line impedance, but will be reflected back towards the line in just like another incident wave at least partially if the source impedance does not match the line so this type of reflection can be troublesome because it make it appear that the source has transmitted another pulse so we'll have long and short transmission line maybe in this dc and maybe low frequency ac circuits the characteristic impedance of the parallel wire definitely it's ignored so that will be including the use of coaxial cables in the instrument circuits often employed in order to protect the weak voltage signals from being corrupted by the induced noise caused by the stray electric as well as magnetic field. So this is due to the relatively short time spans in which reflection can take place in the line as compared to the period of the waveforms or maybe the pulses of the significant signals in the circuit. So maybe if the transmission line you are going to connect it to the DC voltage source, it will behave like a resistor equal to the value of the line's characteristic impedance. Okay, only as long as it takes the incident pulse to reach the end of the line and maybe return as a reflected pulse back to the source. So maybe after that time, maybe like 16.292 microseconds for the mile long uh, coaxial cable of the last example, the source is going to see only the terminating impedance whatever that may be okay so maybe if the circuit in the question handles the low frequency ac power so short time delay introduced by the transmission line when the ac source outputs a voltage peak and maybe when the source sees that peak loaded by the terminating impedance okay so there are little consequence 
so even though we know that the signal uh, magnitude along the line length are not equal at any given time due to the signal propagation at the speed of the light the actual phase difference between start of the line and of course end of the line signal is negligible because the line length propagation occur within a very small fraction of the ac waveform period so finally we'll go for the electrically long line so maybe for practical purposes we can say that the voltage along you know respective points on the low frequency like maybe a, condu a low two conductor line are equal and in phase with each other at any given point of time so we can say that the transmission lines are electrically short because their propagation effects are very quicker than the periods of the conducted signals so maybe the electrically long line is one where the propagation time is a large fraction or maybe uh, considered even a multiple of the signal period so a long line is generally considered to be the one where the source signal waveform completes at least a quarter cycle maybe like 90 degree so totally we have 360 90 degree that quarter it will complete before the incident signal will be reaching the line end